Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, the podcast for the Narrative Lectionary with me, Joy J. Moore. And me, Christopher Van Kaufman. And today we're talking about Isaiah 41 through 11, which is the reading for the second Sunday of Advent. And that'll be December 10th, 2023 this year. Yes. And uh, much like we were talking last week, um, these wonderful words of comfort which we find in the 40th chapter, uh, what we've numbered the 40th chapter of Isaiah, uh, actually come in the midst of, well, Israel's worst times. Um, best described, um, not following immediately chronologically Isaiah 39. So if you read it just chronologically, you will see the pronouncement um, where Hezekiah has just said that, um, you know, I've just about negotiated peace in the Middle East. And uh, the prophet is like, you what? You did what? Oh, no. <laughs> and then chapter 40 says, comfort my people. Stop. A lot of time has happened between that conversation between King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah and the words of comfort that come in chapter 40. And so it's real important uh, I believe for uh, you to communicate as we are preaching that this is in the midst of sorrow. This is in the midst of a trial. This is in the midst of defeat. This is in the midst of exile that this, well, chapter 39 could be said, these words of warning are given at the height of Israel's power. And this word of comfort is given when they're at their least. Yeah. And this goes back to, again, something we said last week. And in thinking about, because this is the narrative lectionary podcast, and thinking about the narrative of the biblical story, it's always good to read the prophets with the historical books, the books of First and Second Kings, because they give a very good idea of the situations that the prophets are facing when they utter these prophecies. And spoiler alert, it's almost all bad. <laughs> you get you get David and you get Solomon. And even with Solomon, yeah. you can tell things. Even with David and yeah, Solomon. you can tell things aren't going as planned and it gets worse from there. But especially in this case, what we get is the experience, and this speaks to our world right now, the experience of loss of nationhood, the experience of exile, the experience of forced migration. All of these things are in Isaiah's mind as he's getting ready to give this prophecy. And again, we talked about this last week, but I want to bring it back because I love that you said it, Joy. That pie in the sky idea that someday this will be good, someday, that's not what Isaiah is talking about here. He's not talking about, you're at your best, here's some more good news. Like you said, you're at your worst, and here's the word that the Lord has to speak to you. And uh, it's, a, it's a word that has really spoken and comforted a lot of people over time. This, these first couple, comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. There's some beautiful hymns that have been written beginning with these <laughs> lines as well. But if, if there's one thing we really want you to remember and reiterate is that these are words for people at their lowest and not to forget that. And um, it, it, just a reminder of where we are in the Christian year. This is the season of Advent. So it is appropriate that these words of comfort in the midst of exile are what we would speak in the 21st century to our, our listeners who are in the midst of their own trauma and horror, whether that is um, personally in their homes or whether that is politically in their countries. And um, the message is to speak tenderly, to speak tenderly. How often it is that you know, we want to point the finger and say, you got yourself into this mess um, and you shouldn't be here in the first place. But that's not the text of this week. The word here is speak tenderly and to let the people know that the valleys will be lifted up, the mountains 
will be made low. The uneven ground will become level. This is a geographic description that we can metaphorically understand. The heights can sometimes be overwhelming. I can't climb this mountain. Mm -hmm. And the lows can be so depressing. I just want to give up. And all of that will be evened out. And when they're evened out, that rough way. Oh, my goodness. I'm about to start preaching. Oh, I I love it. Preach it. (laughs) Preach it. Preach it. That rough way will be made straight. And who is the voice? And will that voice be speaking the promises of God? Because that is the message here. Yeah. And I do want to point out, too, don't get don't get halfway through this prophecy and cut out. Because one of the things no. that's so important about the prophets, and we see this here in Isaiah as well, is these are people who look at reality and aren't afraid to say, here's what's up. And we right. see this. This is not just everything's all right. But we see here in Isaiah 40, especially 6, 7, and 8, all mm-hmm. people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. We feel this in our lives. We feel the way in which the things that we built up, and especially depending on where you live in the world, the societies you build up, how fragile those are and how they can be gone in the blink of an eye. And that we can't take for granted that things like prosperity or peace last in a broken world. And Isaiah points right at that. He's not afraid to say, look at how things have crumbled around you. And that, again, is the, the context in which he is speaking these prophecies, in which he's saying, speak tenderly. Because you've got to speak yes. tenderly if you're going to speak to fragile people. Yes. If you're going to speak yeah. to people whose lives are crumbling. Then he says, but there's one thing that stands forever. And that is the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very important in the Reformation. It's repeated in 1 Peter chapter 3. The word of the Lord remains forever. It becomes something that the Reformers staked their lives on. Was that the word will remain. And that that image of being cared for by a shepherd, by a mother, mm-hmm. that's that that's a powerful image when you're when you're broken and lonely. Uh, but uh, I I jumped in in the middle there oh. because uh, uh, I wanted not to skip over um, uh, the voice. Uh, what when when uh, in verse six the question is. What shall I cry out? And I'm going to put this back in the larger narrative and not get into the questions of uh, authorship (laughs) of Isaiah uh, (laughs) and uh, whether this is a two or a three volume uh, book. I'm just going to merge it all together because um, I know that I'm not the only preacher who has found this to be uh, the book of Isaiah, particularly chapter six, to be our call narrative. Uh, Who will go for us and whom shall I send? And uh, we say, here am I, Lord, send me. And what you said a moment ago about not stopping midway, um, Isaiah is clearly written where if you stop midway, you will miss some very important things. So you took us beyond so that what is it that you are speaking tenderly and why is it that you need to speak tenderly and what is it that you are speaking? Well, when I, f- was, when I first read Isaiah 6 and received it as my word, a word for me, um, I stopped reading at here are my lords and me. And uh, I was uh, I was thir- I was 14, 13, 14, no, 13 years old. And I didn't know that if you say you're going to be a preacher, you're not going to be popular in high school. You know, so it took me 10 years before I came back to that. And when I read it the next time at really listening for God's voice, I didn't stop it. Here am I. And, and it was like, okay, God, I was coming back and you're telling me I'm going to speak and nobody's going to hear and they won't see what I'm saying. So it, every, every verse that we read, and that's why I love our narrative lectionary, because every verse that we read needs to be heard and read in its context. And therefore it needs to be preached in its context so that folks understand this isn't a bumper sticker or this isn't a plaque on the wall or something to stencil on your t-shirts. This is God's faithful promise for us in the moment that we are living in today. 
No, I love it. I love it. And I love that you pointed it to us again to the last verses here. So when we say read all the way to the end, we say it. Because one of the things the prophets do is they surprise us. And so take a look. Verse 10. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Oh, right. We're go. We're going to beat up those people that we don't like. If you end there, that's maybe what you think. But what's he going to do in verse 11? He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. Notice how he changes right when you think you understand the image that he's using, that you can get your head around it. He changes it and he says, but it actually looks like this. And notice the way we get those, the kind of, we begin and end in the same place. Comfort, comfort my people. And he'll hold you like a lamb, hold, like a shepherd holds a lamb. And so read the whole thing. Don't, don't stop halfway. Get all the way to the end because you might be surprised by what you see there.